all of them then may call on the name of the Lord. That's to pray to God. And I want to say in passing that you can also pray to Jesus in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It speaks about calling on the name of Jesus. You can speak to Jesus in prayer. You're not praying to Jesus as God. He's the Messiah. But you can speak to the risen Jesus. It's right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, that's what you do with the Father too. And mainly prayer, of course, is through the Son to the Father. But you don't have to be silent. You can speak to Jesus. Paul thanked Jesus for putting him in ministry. That's a form of prayer. And John 14, 14, for your notes, if you ask me anything, I'll do it. Wow, you ask Jesus something, you'll do it for you. So there is scope for praying and talking to Jesus. It makes no sense to me that the blind men, hearing Jesus walk by, said, Oh Lord, we want to get our sight. Were they wrong to pray to Jesus? Of course not. You can still speak to Jesus. I grant that prayer is mostly and mainly through the Son to the Father. The error is to think that the word worship in the Bible works exactly like our word worship. The Bible is not written in English. And so if you worship somebody in our English, you probably think he's God. It doesn't work that way in the Bible. You can worship the king. There's a classic example of that there, what, in First, First Chronicles 29, 20. They worshipped God and the king. So the error is to think, well, that word worship means exactly what it means to me. In English, it doesn't. Very clear. He's not God. He's the man Messiah Jesus. But God is so thrilled with him. His unique son, who had no human father, he's not just a man, not just an ordinary man, far from that, has no human father, and he lived a sinless, perfect life, and was such a great model that God said, all right, I want you to sit at my right hand, and I don't mind if people call on you. In Revelation 5, quite interesting to see how elevated Jesus is. In verse 8 of Revelation 5, four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. They sang a new song. Who are they talking to here? Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. You were slain, talking to Jesus, and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people. Isn't that amazing? What are they saying to Jesus? That you are the Lamb in verse 12 of the same chapter 5 of Revelation. They're talking to the Lamb and they're saying, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing and every created being in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea. All things in them. I heard them saying, Note this one, to him, that's God with a capital H, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Do you see that? Blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders, the living creatures there, 24 of them fell down and worshipped Jesus as Messiah and the Father as God. So, Jesus is not just a man. This is a unique man, so elevated that you can actually speak language in his direction almost as if he's God himself. He's not a second God. That would be um, not possible. But he's highly elevated. And that passage in Revelation 5 is the one to show your friends that he gets the same sort of honor and glory and praise from the 24 elders in heaven and from everybody in the universe. That's really quite something. That's the status of Jesus. Worship. So that's the old English use of the word worship. We don't say that now. So language is a changing thing. The Bible was not written in English. So if you now find in the Bible that somebody is worshipped, and in Revelation 5, the saints are going to be worshipped. You are going to be worshipped. What? Doesn't mean you're going to be worshipped as God. He is treated as if he's God, almost to the point of him being God, but just short of breaking the first commandment, turning him into a second god. Just short of that. So he's not just an ordinary man, but he's exceptional, unique, because he had no father, just as Adam had no literal father. That's rather amazing. He's the second Adam, and he's the only one who has been raised from the dead and given immortality. 